welcome to another video. Today it is my top five hits and bottom five misses of my makes from 2021. This is basically the TLDR, too long didn't read, version of the 2021 year in review video that you saw yesterday. I made 95 things in total. I keep getting the number wrong. It was 91, then it was 94. It's actually 95 things in 2021, which is pretty amazing given that I didn't really start sewing until the middle of May and I definitely didn't sew in September. I think I made two things in September. So I've made quite a lot of garments this year. I will say again, this is my full-time job. This is what I do for a living, maintaining this YouTube channel and making clothes and showing how I make those clothes is my full-time job. So I do make a lot of clothes and I don't need this many clothes, but I enjoy clothes and I've always had a lot of clothes. So, you know, nobody needs this much. I have this much. I enjoy making them and I enjoy continuing to show you guys how I make them and any tips and tricks that I can come up with along the way. So when I do my 2021 year in review, I make notes about the dresses or tops or clothes or dresses that I absolutely love and I also make notes about the ones that I'm just like oh gosh what was I thinking and that's what this video is. So we'll go through my top five first because we'll get through those quickly because we basically know they're all going to be leafy printed dresses because they are. Then we'll talk about the misses in more detail. So the first win of the year and I th think maybe my very favourite dress is the Vogue 9345 shirt dress in the Dolce & Gabbana cotton lawn that I got from Salvage and Bolts. I love that dress. I love, 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 love that dress. Now I did err on the side of caution and make it a little bit too big for myself because I had put some weight on and I didn't want it to be too tight and I think it's actually a little bit too big and I need to go in and just sort of nip in a few seams inside of the bodice of that dress but I am totally willing to do that and we all know how, how I feel about alterations. I am totally willing to do that because I love, 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 love that dress. The fabric is gorgeous, it's so incredibly soft, very very light, very easy to work with very very sheer so I have fully lined that dress but yeah I love it and thankfully I have enough fabric left that I will be able to make a small top for next summer so I'm excited about that as well. Next up on my list is the first McCall's 7537 that I made this year. This time it was in the Savannah Viscose Chalet Lawn and I did it with a tiered and gathered skirt. I definitely got into tiered and gathered skirts this year and I will be making more next year because they are just epic and so easy to do as well and they don't drop on the bias because everything's cut on grain so oh love 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 that dress it's absolutely beautiful currently it is in London and I am going to London on Friday and I cannot wait till I can wear it again even if it is only around the house but yeah I absolutely love how that dress turned out I added the ruffle on as well and that was the first time doing so and it's really really cute very Zimmerman-esque very gunny sacks very 70s very kind of pirate all of the things that I love. It's gorgeous. So, so happy with that dress. Next up, we have another Lady McElroy fabric. This time it is the Woodland Harmony Viscose Lawn. This one has a little bit of stretch in it, which is very nice. And I made the Vogue 9077 with that. There is a sew along coming for that very soon, I promise. I absolutely love how this dress turned out. The Patreon peeps voted for this particular fabric and pattern combination. And I'm so glad that they did because I, I just, yeah. I love it, totally love it, it's gorgeous. I wear it a lot, very, very comfortable. I really like the details on the dress and the fabric itself is beautiful. I had enough just to squeeze out a little top from this um, fabric as well, which I was really pleased about because yeah, really, really pretty, very happy with that make. We have some more Savannah, this time in the Viscose jersey. This is the 7319. This is the sixth iteration of this dress that I've made and it's the one that I am the happiest with. I have used a cotton jersey as the underlayer for structure and then Viscose jersey over the top for all the drapey kind of overlays. I slash and spread the skirt so that it actually looks like the pattern envelope because the pattern envelope is incredibly misleading. There's a sew along for this dress and I do a pattern review at the beginning where I rant about how sewing pattern envelopes are 
just nonsense. Really, really love how this one turned out. Totally going to be making more. I have, uh, there's one in there, there's one down there, there's one up there. I have at least three more planned. Probably there will be more than that because it is just a phenomenal dress. Really, really like it. And then the final one is the final thing that I made this year and it's another McCall 7537, again with the ruffles and the tiered skirt. When I was making the Savannah one, I completely fluffed up sewing the, or seaming the gathers together. I did it without thinking and it wasn't the way that I wanted to show you you guys how to do it and it wasn't how I would have normally have done it so I had to had to make another one of those dresses so that I could do the tiered and gathered skirt tutorial and I'm really really glad that I did because that dress is just epic there are five meters of fabric in that dress and the skirt has 10 panels in it and I just think it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm so, so pleased with it. It was really nice that my last dress of the year is definitely one of my favorites. So yes, they're my top five favorites. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite. Do you, did I pick one of your favorites? If you have watched my super, super long, epic 2021 full year in review video, would you have put something else in the favorites list that you haven't seen here? Let me know in the comments. Now onto the fun bit, the misses. Now technically I have eight misses on this list, but I think I'm actually only going to talk about six. No, I'm only going to talk about five because I've put three on there. The 8445 shirt, the purple trousers, purple needle cord trousers, and the cape. The cape was the biggest epic fail of the entire year for sure, but I don't have any footage of that one because I cut it up for parts and turned it into the Sorrento jacket, which is a total, total win. Yeah, the cape Cape was epic fail, but I don't have footage of it and I don't have I don't have a garment to show you anymore. So that one can go. The 8445 shirt is a very, very nice shirt. It's got some weird poofiness at the back, but you can corral that with just adding length to the tucks. It wasn't a bad pattern and it wasn't a bad shirt. It's just not my favourite. Then the final one was the purple trousers decades of style empire empire waist trousers i don't think they're a fail but they were they did give me a whole bunch of body image issues and they caused a whole kerfuffle in my own in my own brain they gave me a, a whole bunch of feelings so i have some I haven't worn those trousers and I have some bad feelings attached to those trousers, but they weren't an epic fail. So they're the three that I'm not gonna go into detail about even though I've just have. The ones that I will go into detail for are the McCall 7810. That top was voted for by the Patreon peeps and in theory, I like it, I like it a lot. I really like the line drawings. When I properly looked at the envelope, the one that the lady is wearing is an empire line and the line drawings imply that it's a waist seam and yeah the that confused me to begin with and it turns out that i mean all i needed to do was take the pattern out and have a look at it it was a waist seam it's meant to be a waist seam it would have been better as an empire line in in my opinion i hate that top on me i think it looks awful i did put a sew along out for that because the construction method is valid although they did i mean i changed a few bits because they make you fully line the top of it but then they do some things that are really strange even though you fully line the top of it they don't sandwich the zipper and they don't finish just some odd choices for the construction method so i did put the sew along out for it but grown on sleeves are not for me i have this top has cemented that for me all of that pleating under the bust just no i didn't like it i didn't like it at all and i could have sewn them down and it might have looked better but it got to the point where it was just like I don't like this enough I'm not going to I'm not willing to work on it lots of you are asking me to try different things and try this or try that or try the other but the initial top itself my initial reaction to it was just ugh, no if I've got that reaction to it I don't want to make a load of effort to try and do this that and the other to make it something that I like I have so many patterns to try that it's just not worth the time and effort to persevere with a pattern like that. I have got other patterns that I've persevered with massively because I really, really like the idea and the silhouette of them, but this chop, just no. Just no. No, no, no. No. Next up, we've got the Simplicity 8013 gown. I want to love this. I really like the blue one on the model on the envelope. I really like the illustrations, but when you look at that, the waistband makes it look like there is a fitted 
portion of the dress from the bust to the waist when in reality it's just blues on until the waist and there is no stiffening to put into the waist tie at all it's just tie it and you know they've tied it really effectively on the blue gown on the envelope but it, it, it just wasn't for me there was too much volume everywhere it was a nice idea I really wanted to like it but it just didn't work for me I felt like it drowned me I felt bigger in it than I necessarily think I am but again we've already discussed that like my body image of myself is, is very maybe skewed into what other people see it as but the um, yeah it just it did not make me feel good in that dress and I just didn't want to I didn't finish it and I didn't want to finish it thankfully Big Bird really likes the fabric so she's taken the fabric the pattern off my hands and she's going to try and do something with it which is awesome because you know I had 10 meters of the, that fabric and that was bought in per on purpose for that dress as wearable muslin fodder for a very lovely and expensive fabric that I've got from the lovely Alexandra from Australia she sent me 10 meters of a beautiful viscose to try and recreate this Pinterest look I'm really glad that I tried a wearable muslin first because I would have been so severely disappointed if I had cut straight into that viscose and got that dress I yeah did not like did not like not at all next up we have my next pattern mashup which was the 6130 butterick bodice with the 9077 skirt I had some of the kind of like printed pa pattern left from the fabric I got from Lanzarote I've made a sew over at eve dress out of it which I love and I had this weird piece left that I could get like a, the top of a bodice out of it and I've made so many of the 6380s that I thought I ought to try something different so I tried the 6130 bodice because I've done a sew along for that bodice before as a jumpsuit and I kind of like the outlook outcome of it but I felt like it was really dressy and I also felt that the proportions were out because I did what the pattern told me to and I, I lengthened the midriff section so with the red one I actually lengthened the upper bodice section and left the midriff as was I think it looks slightly better but I just really don't like that bodice on me I didn't really love the red fabric either it was a viscose marocaine from the fabric room and it came stained there were quite a few stains on that fabric that I had to cut around and I still ended up with a couple on the skirt which annoyed me fabric was sheerer than it I thought it was so it should have really been fully lined and I didn't have enough of fabric to do that but by the time I'd made the bodice I already knew that I wasn't really a big fan of it so that dress is just I don't think it's one of the better ones that I've made I don't like it and that one has been donated so yeah that was a pretty pretty sour taste in my mouth after that one because I love the print fabric so much and I I had enough to make a 6380. I should have just listened to myself and, and done that. But never mind, I tried and it just didn't work. Next up, we have the McCall's 8003. In theory, I really like this top. When I was tracing the pattern, I noticed that it was the kind of finish that I hate on jersey patterns where you're meant to just turn it under and top stitch it down. I don't like that finish on jersey necklines. I find that they get really flaccid and it's easy to stretch them out and it's just not a good look my usual reaction is take the seam allowance off draft a band to fit that and sew that on and i should have listened to my instincts and done that for that 803 8003 because the yeah it just if i stand straight with my shoulders back it's not too bad but nobody stands like that and if the minute i started moving it just looked really kind of limp and weak and a bit crap so yeah I didn't like that. I think it would have been slightly better if I'd put the higher neck band on the top as well, the sort of mock turtleneck rather than the thin neck band. But I don't love that enough that I'm going to go back and make those pattern alterations now that I've made it up because I just don't like the top on me. I don't think the cutout detail is something that in person I like. In theory, I love it. In person, no, definitely not. And then the final one is the Grasser 810. This is a copy of an Isabelle Morant jumper I love the sample that they've got on the model I love the original Isabel Morant jumper I don't like it on me the original jumper was a lot longer and I cropped it and put a waistband on it and that makes it look better in my opinion but I still don't like it seeing it on the twirls again I actually kind of initially I'm like oh yeah no actually that's not too bad I've been too harsh on myself no uh, but watching the actual longer twirls after the initial reaction it's just not for me I don't think I'm cool girl enough to wear that kind of thing I, yeah I just I just don't think it's for me I've seen other people make it up and it looks amazing on them it really really does 
but on me it's just not the one and even with my attempts to try and save it it was yeah it's just not the one and i did make it out of a very inexpensive fabric that i got from the textile center which was the itchiest thing known to man oh my goodness it was always going to be a muslin that fabric i mean it's a really pretty color i really really like the color but just no because lots of people were saying that i should keep the top and just wear it as a slouchy around the house top but no it can't have any of it touch my skin because it just immediately made my skin crawl and because of the neckline you either have to make a statement by wearing something underneath of it or not wear anything underneath of it so no just no even watching it back was making my skin crawl so uh yeah that was i think my biggest fail from 2021 i think again if you did watch the whole 2021 year in review do you agree with me would you have put something else in at the bottom spot and inquiring minds would like to know <laughs> but yeah I, I i would be really interested in the comments to hear what you guys think if you would have put the same five in the top and the same five in the bottom or you know if you if you had something else in mind or if you think i've misjudged some of my bottom ones or if i've overly judged some of my top five ones let me know in the comments down below constructively i would be very interested to hear what you guys think so i hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!